Hi, in this video, I've come out and about to show you how to capture birds in flight. Hi, I'm Adam and welcome to First Man Photography, the channel that will help you take your photography to the next level. If you haven't done so already, head over to firstmanphotography.com, fill in your details to join the email list, and I'll send you a free copy of the ebook on how to capture perfect exposure every time. Okay, let's get into this. Wildlife photography is an extremely popular area of photography and capturing birds in flight is one of the most challenging and rewarding pictures you can ever capture, particularly because usually there's no second chance. In this video, we're gonna look at some of the gear you're gonna need. We're gonna talk about the camera settings that you'll want to use. And we'll also go through a couple of techniques that will maximize your chances of capturing those beautiful shots. Any modern DSLR is capable of capturing birds in flight. And people talk about the crop factor and that, that gets you close to the birds, but I really don't think that that's the limiting factor when it comes to capturing the great shots. More appropriate will be to find a camera that just has a great autofocus system, whether that's full frame or cropped, it really doesn't matter because getting closer to your subject, if you can, is gonna have a much bigger effect. So don't worry about the crop factor. If you've got a full frame camera, you're good to go. Having a good long lens is an absolute must for capturing birds in flight. These can get expensive, which is not always great, but they're very good quality, they focus fast, and often they have tracking image stabilization, which will help you keep that bird in your frame where you want it. Cheaper kit style lenses like the 70 to 300 millimeter often just don't have the fast focusing capability to be able to capture those birds in flight on a consistent basis. Something like this Canon 400 millimeter will be absolutely perfect. It's light, it's not gonna break the bank entirely, and you can check out my review in the link down below for this lens. This actually doesn't have image stabilization, but that isn't actually massively important because when we go through the settings, we're gonna use a really high shutter speed, which will freeze the action anyway. So any sort of shake in your camera won't make a massive difference. If you have a bigger or heavier lens, you can use a tripod, a monopod, or a bean bag, something like that to take the strain off your arms. I personally prefer to handhold, and that's what this 400 millimeter lets me do, because it just gives you the, a bit more versatility to get out, get into the locations where you're gonna capture those birds flying. And then when we come to talk about the techniques, it's easier when you're handholding. So let's talk about the settings we're gonna use. The first thing you need to do is to go into the autofocus setting and change it to continuous autofocus. In the Canon camera, this is called the servo AF mode and it's something like AFC on the Nikon. So go ahead and set it as that, and that will continually track the focus on the focus point that you select, rather than locking it in like you do on one shot focus. Some people will use the back button or the back uh, button, the AF button on the back to use the autofocus, and that takes the focus away from the shutter button, which then basically lets you have the best of both worlds, one shot and the servo AF because you, as you focus with the back button, you can then release that and the focus will lock just as it does in one shot. For me, I don't like that. I don't know why, because when I'm hand holding, tracking the birds, if it's just the way I grip the camera, because when I'm pressing that, I'm pressing the shutter button at the same time, I feel like I lose a little bit of smoothness in my arm, so I find it a bit more difficult to track. That's just a personal thing but that works for a lot of people. When you're tracking the bird, you need to keep the bird over the focus point that you have selected. I generally just use the very center point, but that's personal preference. Play around with your autofocus system. Some people use the five center autofocus points. It really depends on your camera and how many autofocus points and settings it has. So have a play around. You need to start off with full auto if you want to, and then narrow it down to the focus points that work for you. But go ahead and try that for yourself. The next thing we're gonna do is switch in to manual mode. And this may sound scary, but it's really not as bad as it seems once we start talking about some of the settings we're going to use. So the most important thing to set first is shutter speed. And you want to have a shutter speed of at least one 1,000th of a second or faster, because that's what's gonna allow you 
to really freeze the action of the birds. Any slower than that, you might start to get blurring and it's gonna be much harder to capture those sharp shots. For the aperture, when you're capturing birds in flight, you probably want to stop down to something like f7.1 or f8, because that just increases your chances of capturing sharp shots because we're increasing that depth of field a little bit. If you're in dark conditions, that's gonna be quite dark though, so you will have to balance that out with ISO. If you're on a nice bright day, you might be able to keep your ISO uh, lower, but the last thing obviously is the ISO and we're gonna use that to balance our exposure in certain situations. I'm very often going up to ISO 1000, something like that. I really try not to go over that, um, but in a lot of conditions that will work for you just fine, especially with the good noise handling of modern cameras. So ISO 1000 is a maximum and then try anything underneath that, depending on your light conditions. Okay, so let's now talk about the technique. Like I said, I'm a big fan of hand holding and that's what this lens and camera lets me do. So when I'm tracking, I will try and watch where the birds are going, plant my feet nice and firm with slightly bent knees and then bring the camera up to my face. And then it's just a case of twisting at the hips, a little bit like capturing a panoramic uh, landscape. So you're gonna start and then just pan around as you're shooting. Obviously the camera's up to your face, looking through the viewfinder, you can then just track the bird around nice and smooth because you want to be able to keep that bird on the focus point like I said and this is where IS can help or the image stabilization can help because it lets you track the bird a little bit easier taking some of that movement out of your uh, pan so again you bend knees look through the viewfinder and then pan around and then start pulling the shutter as soon as you get the bird under that focus point have it on continuous shooting so you can capture a few frames at once don't go too crazy because when you come to post-processing, you will just have too many shots to go through. But do use continuous firing because there is somewhat of an element of luck and you're not going to be able to see exactly if you've got a great shot at the time. Another technique you can use is to use a tripod. And I've got this tripod here and this is just a standard travel tripod in fact, but I find that it is good enough to hold this lens if I have hold of it as well. So just lock your uh, lens onto the tripod like this and then once that's done you can then just leave it off on the just if you've got a ball joint like this one does just leave it loose and then you can just use it to pan around and that's an option if you don't want to be hand holding your camera all day long you can also use a mono, monopod uh, like this one here and again you're just going to track around with that as well and that will take the weight um, but you can also, if you don't have a monopod and you don't want to invest in one separately, just use your tripod in the same way and just bring the legs together like this. And then you can just track around as you would with a monopod. And then you don't have to go to the extra expense of buying that monopod. The most premium option when it comes to uh, tripods is to use a gimbal head like this one attached to a nice big tripod to have that firm base. And then you've got lots of movement in that tripod to then go up and down, left and right, and track those birds. Again though, I really recommend first trying it handheld. I've always had the most success and the best images uh, that I've captured have come from hand holding it. If you get a lens like this one, it isn't too heavy and it, it just gives you that ability to go out, be a bit more mobile and really get into some much more interesting locations and not have to faff about putting a tripod up before you start shooting. It's not always easy because you've got to get into the right places and then that sometimes that takes a bit of local knowledge, a bit of research to find out where those birds are going to be, especially if you want to be shooting really interesting birds like birds of prey. You're going to have to do your research and it's worth doing. Or like me, just find a friend who does that for you and then go out shooting with him or her. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought of the video. Have you tried it yourself? Are you now going to go out and try it? I'd really like to hear from you. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. This video is going up on a Wednesday and a Sunday, and I'll see you on another video very soon. I'm Adam, this is First Man Photography.